keep telling y'all, bro, you can have mixed ancestry. You can have native ancestry and African ancestry, but you cannot say black people are native to the Americas, bro. Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Achila Yona, I'm a researcher, author, and genealogist, and I talk about history, culture, pertaining to indigenous people. So, when I came across this video on Twitter, I knew I had to make content on it. And not because this guy right? It's obviously taking shots at the humelinated indigenous community, but he decided to quote Shonda. And I'm going to try to pronounce her last name. He said how to pronounce it, but every time when I try to pronounce her last name, I forget how to pronounce it. So I'm just going to say her first name, Shonda. Oh wait, Buchanan. Buchanan? Yes, Shonda. I'm just going to say Shonda. So, <laughs> y'all, it's one of those days, okay? And also, I'm sorry I have not been making content in the past week. I've been very tired. So, you may hear it in this video, and I'm sorry, but the show must go on, right? Okay. I had a full-blown conversation with Shonda before and off the rip I could tell that she was not one of those people that viewed black people as indigenous and that's fine that's cool because we know genealogy is complex meaning not everyone has the same ancestry just because someone ancestry is a certain way doesn't mean that your ancestry is similar to or is the same as theirs. Genealogy is the way to go to learning about your ancestry because genealogy is studying one's ancestry through paper genealogy like census records, Indian roles, probate records, wills, etc, etc. So not everyone ancestry is the same, okay? And although they love to push this out of Africa theory onto us, scientists have came out and said that after the mother African period and the archaic period, they don't know where modern humans come from. After they sit there and fought tooth and nail about this theory, now they're saying, oh, well, we don't know where modern humans come from. So yeah, after... Hundreds of years of grave robbing, they have finally came to this conclusion, which I'm sure they came to that conclusion by the second grave they have dig up. And if they're a little slow, make it four or five. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it does not take multiple lifetimes, hundreds of years to come to the conclusion that you're not going to know where modern humans come from. So anyway, back to Shonda. So now when I look back to my conversation with her and seeing how in her book she says how people view her as uppity, I can definitely get why they view her that way. I don't view her as uppity. I view her as one of those so-called Black Indians that feel like they are the exception to the rule. And quite frankly... Talking to her gave me a reality check because there is a reason why there is a whole disconnect between quote unquote black Indians and the quote unquote black American population. Because although there are plenty of so called black Indians that agree that so called black Americans have indigenous ancestry, they still think that they are the exception to the rule of quote unquote white supremacy. They are in close proximity to whiteness, a.k.a. the pale natives that people love to say are the true indigenous people, and the fact that they were brought up the indigenous way, meaning they were seeing the world through the black perspective, like so many misnomered indigenous Americans were raised and brought up. And quite frankly, no one is the exception to the rule when it comes to pale European dominance. 
they may extend that white membership to you. But once they get what they want out of you, they dispose of you. We have seen them do it with their own biracial children. We see them do that to Hispanic Mexicans. And like I stated before, Mexicans used to be automatically seen as white due to the high amount of admixture of European in their DNA, in their bloodline. And we also see this with the pale natives or white natives. They begged our people to help them. And when they were down and bad, we were there. And not to mention that a lot of these pale natives are whitewashed descendants of eumelanated indigenous people. And when money was involved, then that's when they decided to drop us and say, oh, well, I'm not associated with them. Oh, no, um, I don't know them. Because either they don't want to be were classified as black or being known to be hanging around the quote unquote Negroes or related to the Negroes, or simply because they just don't like the indigenous American Negroes and they feel like they are better because they are in proximity to whiteness. So a lot of people don't understand history. And although I do appreciate Shonda's image because she looks very graceful. But it's the fact that I want people to understand that it's not the quote-unquote black Indians that is leading us back to ourselves. It is us who is taking that journey to ourselves. A lot of these black Indians are not our friends and they do not share the same views as us, even though that they claim to be thoroughly involved and knowledgeable in genealogy they still don't understand that we are our own group of people we are our own set of people we are not the eurasian native we are the aboriginal people and they still don't get that due to them being in proximity to whiteness close proximity to whiteness and because they value whiteness they will never, ever, ever, ever agree to us having our own representation without white pale natives being involved. But I'm trying to get this video done in under 30 minutes. So without further ado, I'm going to show y'all the video in the comment section and I'm going to come back with further commentary. Peace if it's peace. Y'all want to be some black Indians? Yeah, so let's talk about black Indians. My lord, Afro-Native Assimilation Blues. Yeah, Black Indian by Sean W. Buchanan. As the Lord goes on my father's side of the family, my great-grandfather, Grandpa Tone, had two wives in Oklahoma, Mississippi. My lord, he had an African wife, you know what I'm talking about, and a Choctaw wife who lived down the street from each other with their own separate families. These two sets of families produce two different but shared bloodlines. My uncle Blue told me at my father's funeral, Grandpa Tone spent half his time at one house with the African family and the other half at the Indian's wife house. My lord, yeah, I keep telling y'all, bro, you can have mixed ancestry. You can have native ancestry and African ancestry, but you cannot say black people are native to the Americas, bro. And it's funny how people with real black Indian ancestry don't say that. My lord, bro. Hey, y'all need to dig into y'all real family history and then dig into real historians, bro. Shout out to the real black Indians that's not misconstruing things, bro. Black people are from Africa, bro. <laughs> oh, my Lord. And we got here to America via the transatlantic slave trade. We made it with Indians, a few of us. Most of us didn't know, but those that did, yeah, they have mixed ancestry. We're not native to America, geniuses. And then let's pay attention to this part right here. She says, sometimes black folks give me the look when I say I'm an American Indian as well as an African American. It's simple, I think. 50-50, like two sides of a coin. Girl, please, I get the neck roll and the corresponding roll of the eyes. You know you black heifer or everybody got some Indian in them. Don't get uppity. Everybody got some Indian in them. Not everybody. <laughs> 
my lord. That's what I'm talking about. Shout out to Shonda, man. Y'all have read that comment section and seen the video, and honestly, it's giving hot mess. But before I say anything, let's go ahead and look at the screenshot of the page of the book he was reading, okay? So she goes to talk about how basically her, what, Grandpa Tone, her great-grandfather being a Rolling Stone, like, yeah, we get that, okay, yeah. So, I'm going to read where it says, Sometimes black folks give me the look when I say I am American Indian as well as African American. It's simple. I think 50-50. Like two sides of a coin. Girl, please. I get the neck roll and the corresponding roll of the eyes. You know you black, heifer, or everybody got some Indian in them. Don't get uppity. Everybody got some Indian in them. Not everybody. Okay, so Paul's saying cut. How is it that she goes basically given the dissatisfactory towards everybody got some Indian in them, but yet there's no dissatisfactory towards, oh, you know you black. Because now the pro-blacks are always claiming that people of biracial ancestry like american indian and african they say that they don't acknowledge both sides but it sounds like shonda do because obviously that's her whole persona and for them to say oh you know you black where is the where's the follow-up for that it sounds like she had a real big bone to pick with that particular sentence being said to her. And as smart as Shonda is, she should know the impact of paper genocide and the term black is no exception to that. The term black was also used to erase the identity of indigenous people. Because they always want to talk about how American Indians, they say, oh, well, a lot of Indians they claim to be Mexican, so they wouldn't have to face discrimination. Okay, but what about the Indians that had to claim black so they wouldn't get jacked? How about that? No one never really wants to talk about the plight of our people. And it's shameful. This is very shameful. And I have nothing against Shonda because she just liked the next person trying to find her way. But at the same time, when you do your genealogy and you start learning more about history, 
you'll learn so many things that you didn't learn in school and it would make you question everything that you know. Trust me, I've been there, okay? When I found out that in colonial America that they were sending and shipping East Indians here as slaves, oh, it blew my mind. And not only that, but some of them wound up being counted as Indian as well. American Indian at that. Could you imagine? Well, you can because it happened. There were people from the Philippines that came by the way of the Manila Galleon. They were being counted as Indios in colonial Mexico and being counted as Indian, American Indian. So a lot of people do not know history. Because if they knew, they would also know that these Asians, right, from the Manila Galleon, were also being assimilated into the American Negro communities as well. So when you do your genealogy, when you learn more about your family ancestry, you'll learn that history is way more complex than what teachers have made you thought to believe. A lot of people are still learning life through their 10th grade education. Okay. And that's just not going to fly anymore. If you want to know the truth, you have to do the research. And I think it's very crazy that Shonda mentions genealogy in this book, but not, but did not mention what I have just said. I haven't read her book, but I think it's funny that she didn't mention anything about East Indians being assimilated into the quote unquote black American community. Cause that's what she would probably say. All these things were happening and neither does Shonda and even Henry. I don't really see them talk about these subjects in great detail and they need to be talked about because even quote unquote African-American, black American ancestry is not singular either. People from different ethnic backgrounds and races like East Indians, Asians, etc. Them being assimilated into the American Negro communities, that affects how, obviously how we are seen, and that affects the gene pool as well. So again, how are you going to sit here and say that everybody's African who is within this demographic when other races of people were being assimilated into the American Negro communities as well. And American Indians are no exception to the rule because we know how paper genocide has played a part. We know about the Walter Pleckers. We know that even before Walter Plecker, that they were counting indigenous slaves as black, Negro, etc., Because a lot of people do not understand and realize that Negro is also a status. And it was used as a term to call someone a slave as well. Negro and slave were synonymous. And even judges ruled on this. Jack D. Forbes talked about this in his book, Africans and Native Americans. Okay. So, and this is where Henry Lewis... Gates Jr. come in because he goes on to say, well, in her book, this is what she quotes. And not as many we think, according to historian Henry Louis Gates Jr., work in genealogy where he basically says very few African Americans possess American Indian ancestry based off the sheer disproportionate ratio of Africans to Indians in the New World. But my red black friends disagree vehemently with Gates' hypothesis vehemently at one panel discussion at the Hampton Public Library I heard blah 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 okay so again if you want to talk about African-American history 
black American history, American Negro history, whatever you want to, whatever title you're going with, okay? Because I'm not here to argue about titles. I'm here to help people understand and realize that there is a lot to genealogy that people have yet to understand. And with that being said, there are so many different looks to our communities that people don't understand what is a true eumelanated indigenous American. Because quite frankly, people are seeing the different phenotypes of the offspring of people assimilating into our communities. Because without a doubt, American Negroes are indigenous too. They are just reclassified. That's the clear difference. Now, when talking about African slaves being imported into the Americas, we already know the numbers are off, obviously. But however, people fail to realize and understand that the majority of African slaves were going to Brazil, not the United States, not Mexico, not Canada, but Brazil. And even Henry Louis Gates Jr. himself, he will tell you that only 388,000 Africans came to North America. So by that number, how do you expect me to believe that that small number populated all the so-called African Americans today? It's just not possible and it's not logical. And especially considering the racial whitening that was happening in all communities during colonial slavery and how even today, racial whitening still takes place today. So I just refuse to believe that Africans populated every dark-skinned person that they call black in the Americas. It's just not possible. They are also counting indigenous people as black too. And if you would like more information on that, I will link my videos down below. And I can also reference you this book, African and Native Americans by Jack Forbes. I think it's very enlightening that Shonda did not include paper genocide in, in this page right here. There's not a mention of paper genocide. It's not the talk of hell government officials who are over the vital statistics or records, record keeping, whatever, reclassifying indigenous people as black, as colored. You know, and it's so crazy because there's so many of these so-called black Indians representing for us. And saying how they understand our struggle, our, our plight, and all these different stuff. But still, there's such a distinct separation in their mind that they don't think it's a problem. Because it doesn't take a knuckle cracker to understand and realize that you melanated indigenous people have been wronged. Because a lot of people don't know that when you melanated indigenous people were being counted as freedmen, first of all, that was double the paper genocide, okay? Not only is the tribal nation reclassified as a English label tribe, okay, not in our own indigenous language, but you're going to class the darker skin, full-blooded indigenous people as freedmen too. And even if they were slaves, it does not mean that they were indigenous. Because in many cases, due to them being enslaved, they didn't have the paperwork to quote-unquote prove their indigenous ancestry. There's so much to you melanated American people's history that even you melanated indigenous Americans are dropping the ball. We got the pale people, we got the pale natives admitting that soul music come from indigenous people. We got 
the pale people talking about our influence and they're even showing us that their ancestors look nothing like them. They look closer to us than them, but yet they want to deny that we are indigenous, that a large percentage of the quote unquote American Negro population has indigenous ancestry. Now I'm not talking about African American. I'm talking about the quote unquote American Negro. I hope you enjoyed the commentary. Leave a heart down below if you enjoyed. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content and hit the bell button notification to get notified when I go live and when I upload a new video. Thank y'all guys for watching. I love y'all. And until the next time, bye. But that's all I have to say. I may make a part two of this video. I don't know, but I don't want to make it too long. So thank y'all guys for watching. <music>